Hello, I have a question here from Harry asking how to find the answer to this question, which says 4 is 3 eighths of what number? But I don't want to just solve it by plugging into a formula. I want to look at this intuitively to understand what's happening here and to break it down in a way that, that really makes sense. So Harry had good instinct and, and knew right away that for a question which asked something like 4 is one fifth of what number, right? If this was the question, which says four is one fifth of one number, what we can do to solve this is take four and multiply it by five to get 20. So the answer is 20, right? Because four is one fifth of 20. To understand the, the, the question up here, let's examine this a little bit further and, and look at it intuitively about what's happening in this simpler example. So to understand what's happening here, let's draw a picture. Let's say we have a, a rectangle, right? And you're saying that 4 is 1 fifth of this rectangle. So we're going to cut it in five pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's pretend that my drawing is perfect, then that each of these pieces are actually exactly the same size. So what are you actually saying here when, when you say 4 is 1 fifth of some number? Well, you're saying that this is some number, and 4 fills, or is, one-fifth of that number, right? So we can say that this piece right here is equal to 4, and that this whole area right here is the entire number. So to find out the entire number, it makes sense, right? If the entire number has five pieces, and one of those five pieces, right, one-fifth is 4, altogether, We'll have another 4, and another 4, and another 4, and another 4. And that would be the whole area, or the whole number that we're looking at. And that's 5 4s. So the answer here could be thought of as five, 4 times 5, and that's 20. Now really, though, to think about what's happening here, to, to help with tougher problems, we should say, yes, we're multiplying by 5. But really, we can also think of this as multiplying by, by 5 over 1. And you might not think uh, that that makes much of a difference here because you're saying, oh, okay, 5 over 1, doesn't that mean 5 divided by 1? Well, the answer is yes, and, and that's still just 5. But, but by writing it like this, we make an observation. Look at 1 fifth, right? And then we have 5 over 1. So here we're, t we're saying 4 is 1 fifth of some number, but then we multiply by not just 5, but 5 over 1. What you might notice right here is that it's almost like these two fractions are flipped. Right here, for 1 fifth, 1 is up in the numerator. Then we multiply by 5 over 1, and it's in the denominator. Also, with 1 over 5, 5 is in the denominator. Here, it's in the numerator. And in fact, we have flipped these. And these two fractions are called reciprocals. And that's going to be a really important idea for all sorts of fraction and percent problem. Reciprocals are just two numbers that when you multiply them, you get 1, right? Because 1 over 5 times 5 over 1, that just equals 1 times 5, or 5 over 5, which is 1. Or we can think of it as a fraction that's been flipped, and that's what reciprocals are. So here, Harry's solution so far and strategy is to just multiply by the reciprocal. And in fact, that does work in all cases. Here, with 4 is 3 eighths of one number, to find this out, I could take 4 and multiply it by not just 8, right? Because if it said 4 is 1 eighth of one number, we multiply 4 by 8, and, and that would be 32. But here, we're multiplying by the reciprocal, so 8 over 3. And here, to solve that, we do 4 times 8, which is 32 over 3. This, of course, means 32 divided by 3, and that's what? Well, 32 goes into, oh, 3 goes into 32 10 times, and there's a remainder of 2, or 10 and 2 thirds. So here our number, you can tell right away, is a little bit tougher. It's 10 and 2 thirds. But what's really happening here with a picture? How can we understand this strategy and, and, what's, and why the answer is 10 and 2 thirds? Well, now, and we'll draw us down here, we're saying 4 is 3 eighths of something. So now we're going to draw, you know, some number. And this time, we're not splitting it into, into fifths, into five pieces, but we're going to split it into eight pieces. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more, eight. Okay. So again, please pretend that each of these pieces are exactly the same. Right? A fraction says that you're splitting things into equal groups. But this time we're saying that, that 4 is not one of these eighths, which would be nice and easy, but instead it equals not just 1 eighth, not just 2 eighths, but 3 of the eighths, or 3 of the 8 pieces. And here, that's equal to 4. So intuitively, when you're trying to find what this whole number is, one thing you can do is say, oh, if I double that, right, this would also be equal to 4, another 3 eighths. But we want to know what the whole number is, and what's left. Well, this is where it gets tricky, because there's only two pieces left. One, two. And what are those two pieces equal to? Well, now you only know one thing. You know that three-eighths, right, is equal to four. So you're trying to find out what two-eighths is equal to, right? What is that equal to? Right, these two pieces right here. And now there are many ways to solve this expression right here. I'm going to say that, oh, well, I'm trying to find out what two pieces are equal to in compared to these three pieces right here. So, in other words, if you know that three pieces are equal to four, or a total of four, two pieces is two-thirds of, of four. <coughs> Excuse me. Right? Because if you think about what's happening, let's draw a little small diagram. Three pieces equals four. Here we're saying we have one two pieces. So if the whole thing is four, and we want to know what these two pieces are, it's two out of three, or two-thirds of four. And I'm just going to say it's two-thirds of four. And that equals what? How do you find that? Well, to find two-thirds of four, what you can do is multiply two-thirds times four, and that's eight over three, right? Two times four is eight over three, and then we can simplify this. 8 over 3 is equal to 2, because 3 goes into 8 twice, with a remainder of 2 thirds. Wow, what does all this mean? Well, again, we're trying to find this whole number, right? This whole big piece. We just said that if 3 eighths is 4, another 3 eighths is another 4. So, so far, this number is 4 and 4 more. And, well, this mystery number, we just solved that, is 2 and two-thirds, right? That's what these two pieces equal. Add them all up, and we get 10 and two-thirds. Now, that's exactly what we got before with this algorithm right here, where we're multiplying by the reciprocal. But you can think of it intuitively in the sense of, a, of any picture that you have, it just gets a little bit tricky when you have fractions or fractions of fractions that are left over. Now, how can this all be solved algebraically? Is there even a more powerful way of solving it? The answer is absolutely. So let's look at that. 4 is um, 3 eighths of what number? Okay. Well, well the key here is to, is to translate this into an equation. 4 is, right, equals and is are synonymous in mathematics. 3 eighths of, well, of can be thought of as multiplication, some number. So 3 eighths of, let's say, x. And now we have a simple problem to solve where we solve for x. How do you solve for x here? Well, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So it says 3 eighths x equals 4. <clears throat> now to solve for x, we need to get rid of this, this coefficient. How do we do that? Well, that's where our reciprocal comes into play. And this is the basic idea that that Harry knew from the start. How do we do that? Well, the reciprocal of 3 over 8 is 8 over 3. And we multiply both sides by this value. We want to keep things balanced, so we multiply both sides by 8 over 3. Why is that useful? Right? Because here you can really do anything you want in order to solve. But that's useful because we said earlier, if you multiply reciprocals, the value and product is 1. So if I multiply these two reciprocals, it's going to equal 1. And that allows me to isolate x all by itself. There it is. And x equals this. What's this? Well, 8 times 4 is 32 over 3. That's what we got before. That's 10 and 2 thirds. 
And this step right here, you notice, is kind of what we jumped to in the beginning before, where we multiplied 4 by the reciprocal. This algebraic expression kind of shows why that works and how it works. But, you know, there, there are so many ways to solve this, this question up here. And I, and I think that this equation is a very powerful tool. Because anything they throw at you, you can plug it right in. Where the first number goes right here, right? The equal sign is 3 eighths right there of what number, right? Multiplying by x or some unknown. But even if you don't like that, I mean, we could even look at it from another perspective. 4 is 3 eighths of what number? Let's put what. Well, going back to the picture idea, if you didn't like what we showed before, draw another picture and again split it into eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and again I messed that one up, eight. Again, if four is equal to three eighths, one, two, three, this is four. Well, my last strategy was to double that and say that another 3 eighths is another 4, and then find these two remaining pieces and add them up. But if you don't like that and you want another intuitive way to solve this, break this down into 1 eighth, right? Whenever you're given a, a problem like this where they say 3 eighths of something, find out what number is 1 eighth of this whole number right here. So break it right down into 1 eighth. <clears throat> How do we do that? Well, if these three pieces equals a total of four, right, we can take four and divide it by three to find what each of these pieces are actually worth. Right, think about it. You're adding one group, another group, and another group, and when you add them all up, you get four. So if I want to undo that or reverse it, I could divide four by three. And how do you do that? Well, three goes into four once with the remainder of one right, or one-third. And what does that mean? Well, if you take four and split it in three pieces, each piece is one and one-third. So in this case, each piece is one and one-third, one and one-third, and so forth. And this, you might like this one a little, little better, because all eight pieces here, and whatever this thing is, are equal to one and one-third. We can convert that to an improper fraction. Three times one is three plus one is four, so each little piece is four over three, and you're trying to find out what's the whole number. Well, there's eight pieces that are four over three. Multiply that by eight, and you've got it, right? And again, that'll bring us to 32 over three, or 10 and two thirds. If this, you know, if this strategy appeals to you, and for Harry, it'll go back to his initial strategy, notice then, we take our original number, four thirds, which we change that because we look at one little piece which is one and one third or four thirds. And in that case, you're saying four thirds or one and one third is one eighth of what number? So you can actually change the problem in a sense because now we can use our original strategy, take four thirds and multiply it by eight when the numerator here is one, right? When you're finding one eighth. So if you're given three eighths, you can change it to one eighth. And there, you know, there are so many strategies here I just wanted to introduce a couple. But in terms of, uh, of your own proficiency as a math student, I really highly advise you to not lose the intuitive sense and also to try and develop your skills with those algebraic expressions that can really take you a long way. All right, thanks a lot.